racing against history. Welcome to the Lee Valley Velo Park for Sir Bradley Wiggins' easy, eagerly anticipated attempt on what he himself describes as the holy grail of cycling, and that is the UCI World Power Record. And beat the, bar, the mark met by Alex Dowsett, May the 2nd in Manchester. 52.937 kilometres, and if so, for how much? And here is the man himself to an absolutely rapturous reception from the crowd here. He's a couple of minutes late coming out, but there's no problem there at all. All the phones are out, the fans are there, and they're waiting for the moment. Opting for those golden socks, golden sort of golden shoes, black socks, and just in his element here. Many, many spectators and commentators and pundits are not thinking so much about will he break the world hour record. It's more well, Sarah Rob, I don't know about you two, but I got complete goosebumps life. there. That was an incredible Hair shorn, reception. The beard it was gone as well. Very steely gaze. That really not, is not a marginal gain. Just focusing He's on getting around, around that on track, his Pinarello, absorbing the atmosphere, those legs, and uh, keeping his legs turning. Up. And we'll talk it through what he's got ahead. He takes the start. At least 221 laps around this trials of his career. Yeah, it, he will be in his absolute element, training over the last seven Bradley. weeks following the only way he does it. Power Roubaix and then his appearance at the Tour de Yorkshire has been focused purely pace, on the track, down, purely on this discipline and getting it right pace. and he's openly he stated Ico, that he wants to try and put this record line, almost out of reach and he's even quoted as saying he wanted pace, to put it on the shelf for perhaps between 10 and 15 years so but uh, fully respectful of the quite wonderful mark set a couple of weeks back or a couple of months back now by uh, Alex Dowsett but he's going to be riding and aiming to ride at 55.250, that's 34.33 miles, and that equates simply to 221 laps. And that would work out at 16.3 seconds per lap, and we estimate that he's going to be riding at around 420 watts for those of you out there interested in power. But I, for one, I've got my cup of tea, I'm ready, hopefully everybody out there as well will be on the edge of your seats just to see what this man can do. Will he set a mark that puts, well will, will it put others off? There he is just getting ready now, got the golden helmet on, that distinctive Wigo logo. Of course Wiggins now wearing the new kit of Team Wiggins, the eponymously titled British squad. Moving across from Team Sky earlier in the year, his last race for Team Sky, of course, was a very memorable performance in Paru Bay, where he finished a very solid 18th. He tried to go out in a blaze of glory. It wasn't to be. The attack with 20 or 30 kilometres to go in that race. In a race, he's quoted as saying, would have been more important to him to win than the Tour de France. But now that race is behind him. He's focused 100% on this record. And there he is. Riding a bespoke bike, of course, bespoke kit as well. The Pinarello bullied. Well, interestingly, tonight he's riding a gear of 58 teeth at the front and 18 on the back. Quite an unusual gear ratio when compared to uh, other riders over the past few months. We've taken on this record and it's worth at this moment as Wiggins is poised to take his start to go through the last few records since of course the UCI changed the ruling on the hour record for Jens Voigt back on uh, the 18th of September 2014 took the mark to 51.115 kilometers in Switzerland but that was very quickly broken by Matthias Brandley of Austria and that again was in Switzerland as well his mark took the hour up to 51.852 but Wiggins is now off. Now rolling away on his opening lap. They want to build up. It will take him approximately four laps to build up to his optimum speed. And then he'll set, settle down into his flow. And hopefully be lapping at around 16, 16.3 16 seconds a lap. Well, that's the first image there of Sir Bradley Wiggins, the Olympic time trial champion. 
the world time trial champion and the British time trial champion. Just rolling round at the moment, trying to keep us close to that black line. The crowd already on their feet. He's been saying, you can just see Heiko Zalzbiedel on the left-hand side. He's going to be man, the man who's going to be walking the line and making sure Brad keeps to his pace. And Brad at the moment drifting quite high. He'll want to keep as low as possible. And for those of you new to watching this discipline, it's all about how many laps he completes. And the further you drift up the banking, that will mean you're actually going further. So you need to hug that black line as much as possible. And that is something that Bradley Wiggins is very, very used to doing. Multiple medalist at the Olympic Games and World Championships, of course. If you just look back through his quite remarkable Palmares, three times gold medal in the World Individual Pursuit Championships back in 2003, 2007 and 2008. Two golds in the team pursuit in 2007 and 2008. Also a gold in the Madison with Mark Cavendish back in 2008 as well. And three silver medals in the team pursuit, 2000, 2001, 2003 and a bronze back in 2002. And then we go to the Olympics. What a record. It's one of the most decorated Olympians of all time. And he's looking ahead, of course, to Rio next year, where he's hoping to join the British Team Pursuit squad to end his career. But the hour record is what it's all about at the moment. But took individual pursuit gold out of the Olympics in 2004 and 2008. Team Pursuit gold as well in 2008, as well as a silver in Athens in 2004, a bronze in Sydney, and then a Madison bronze in Athens in 2004 and then of course the individual gold medal of the time trial back in London in 2012 the average speed at the moment on your screen there 54.488 kilometers an hour so lapping pretty steadily at the moment the mark set where well, the mark has got to beat of Alex Dowsett a reminder for everybody at home watching this is 52.937 just riding under that at the moment, but he won't be too worried at all. It's all about discipline. It's all about measuring your effort. But without a shadow of a doubt, one of the maestros at the individual effort. This is Bradley Wiggins, well into his flow, metronomic as ever. He's looking at a cadence of around 100 to 105 revolutions per minute which over the total distance, should he uh, achieve the mark that he set out to, will equate to between 6,000 and 6,000 revolutions. That's individual pedal revolutions per hour, which is quite remarkable. But of course, if you look at his, his Pinarello there, there's no water bottle on board. It's very warm in the velodrome. It's around 27 degrees and rising, but the atmospheric pressure not ideal. It's around 1,100 uh, millibars, just there or thereabouts. The optimum pressure in relation to uh, performance in the hour is around 850. And that pressure was in London actually just about a week ago. And apparently a week ago would have been the ideal time. But the date has been set and the moment has come. He's prepared perfectly for this event and can't do anything about the atmospherics does strike it uh, as being rather strange considering the velodrome is of course enclosed it is very very warm in there but again the optimal temperature are between 28 and 30 degrees but it is rising it is controllable but again with it, the uh, added crowd in the mix that really does elevate the temperature quite dramatically and this event sold out within seven minutes and that's around 6,000 seats just shows the quite remarkable popularity of the man on your screens right now. Just concentrating and keeping a smooth and even rhythm for as long as he can. Now the psychology behind the hour is quite remarkable. It takes a certain sort of individual. First and foremost, you have to have the physiological attributes, the ability to produce the power over this, over this time, but also you have to be very, very mentally resilient and disciplined. Now Wiggins himself, 
has said he doesn't actually um, think about the whole distance. He's broken it down into 12-minute efforts, and he says the easiest 12 minutes of the hour will be the first 12 minutes. He says that's something that you know you can sustain. If you can sustain the effort for just 12 minutes, it's different than the hour, of course. Then he'll just tick off each 12 minutes as they come. And the third 12 minutes of this hour is where he said that the pain will really start to bite. And then the last 12 minutes could be absolute hell. Just about as fast as you can go for as long as you can, but whilst maintaining smooth. And it's interesting when you look at the, uh, the records over the last few, few months, Alex Dowsett rode a very, very measured hour. As I said, 52.937 was the total distance. Now, the previous mark that he had to beat was by the Australian Rowan Dennis of the BMC squad. Now, the mark then was 52.491 kilometres, set in Switzerland on the 8th of February. But Dowsett was quite a bit behind Rowan Dennis on the first start and was actually riding at a pace that he wasn't particularly happy with on speaking to his coach. But he trusted his coach and then he let rip in the last 10 minutes. And uh, the curve on the graph, and I believe we are going to be showing some graphs during uh, this hour in relation to the different efforts and the different tactical way to ride this event. Whereas Dowsett opened it up at the back end. We expect Wiggins to ride a far more measured effort. He said that if you ride the hour right, you shouldn't be able to lift it. And Alex Dowsett, although he said a quite remarkable mark, he was disappointed and reflected back that he'd still had a little bit left in the tank. He would hope he would have loved to have gone above 53 kilometers and he fell only a little bit short of that. But Will Wiggins set a mark that Alex Dowsett would wish to wish to better, or will he put it so far in front that that would deter anybody else? I think there's only two other riders who have the physiological attributes on their day to match Wiggins in a straight out and out time trial and arguably they would be Fabian Cancellara the Swiss multiple world time trial champion and the German Tony Martin but riding on the track and measuring, you, measuring your effort and the track craft it takes is completely different and Fabian Cancellara has undenard Tony Martin has uh, considered the record but I think if they do take on the record, a lot will depend on the mark that this man here on your screens sets tonight. And again, he's hoping to reach the mark of 55.250 kilometers. And there we are, lap 30. So well into the effort. And only a few minutes away from that first chunk. So there's no discernible impression when you look closely at the face of Wiggins that he's in any state of distress. But I can assure you, near the back end of this, this hour, we'll start to see some cracks appearing. But there he goes. Looks very, very calm. Breathing in the air. It's hardly moved on the saddle at all. Doesn't shuffle around. You see many other riders in time trials and on the track moving back and forwards on the, sh the saddle. And many of the saddle these days do have grips on to stop the riders. That's the first sign there, Brad. Just moving back on the saddle to make sure he can get in that optimum position. But what a side it is. Remarkably smooth. A steady cadence. It makes it look effortless. Ordered and very, very simple indeed. When in fact it isn't. It's remarkably difficult. And will get harder and harder as each lap progresses. And interestingly, if you look at Wiggins in the past, Riding on the road, he said, uh, today he's opted for more of a teardrop helmet made by uh, Giro. Now, uh, that sort of teardrop helmet helps the, court, the sort of rider who can actually keep their head in one position. Now, if you're a rider that keeps moving around, looking left and right and gets out of the saddle, and you choose a teardrop helmet, that actually causes quite a lot of disturbance in the airflow and can become remarkably unaerodynamic. Especially if you turn your head once or twice a lap and the accumulative loss of power and air disturbance can dramatically affect the distance travelled. As you can see, Wiggins hardly, but not even moving his head at all, absolutely rock steady. So that's why we're seeing him utilise the more teardrop-shaped helmet here, rather than the more stub stubby type of helmet that you see him use on the road. 
but on the road there are so many more different variables as well. On the road there are different changes of direction in relation to, in relation to the wind, there are descents, there are climbs, there are opportunities to lift yourself out of the saddle to change gear. Momentarily when you're cornering you can rest, relax, catch your breath before getting going again. But in this discipline there is no west rest at all, absolutely relentless and extremely challenging indeed. So lap 39 now. If you look at Zalzweedle there, walking the line, seems to be pretty happy with his man at the moment. Just lapping calmly, still riding a little bit high near the red line on the straight, then drops in to just on the black line. But it's important, he hugs that bend as best he can and keeps us low and near that black line to optimise the distance and keep those laps as short as he can. Remember the velodrome here, 250 metres in length. And if you start deviating too much, you're just going to add centimetres, which then turn into metres. So that's why it's so, so important to keep as low as possible without dipping below the black line. But again, a master of the art. We're just going to go to a quick interview with the man himself. I started by working in 12 minute chunks really, because 610 sounds a lot and 415 sounds a hell of a lot, but, but 512 is good. So the first 12 minutes is, is, is pretty much free, it's, it's a, a free thing. Because of the pace you're going on, you're going on a pace that is A to B for one hour as fast as you can go. So 12 minutes should be easy if you can sustain it for one hour. So that, if you had to just stop at 12 minutes, you'd get off and go, no, it was easy that. But, so that's, that's free 12 minutes. The last 12 minutes is horrific. If you, you just plan, the last 12 minutes is going to be the worst thing you ever do, horrific. Probably I never have kids again at the end of it. So that's that one, just leave that one there. Don't, don't touch it, you know. That will come, and when it does come, you'll, you'll push through it. But it ends after 12, and then you never have to ride the bike ever again if you don't want to. Well, there you go. The man himself talking through the way that he approaches this discipline. And again, in training, we're not aware that he's actually ridden the full hour. He's ridden uh, blocks of 15 minutes and up to 45 minutes, but never beyond the hour. Alex Dowsett was the same. He never rode beyond 40 minutes in any of his training sessions. So the last 20 minutes for Dowsett particularly, it was completely unknown. But again, very much like other disciplines in cycling, perhaps... Um, a good example would be to use a climbing, climbing mountains is to break the climb down into bite-sized chunks and focus on a series of different finishing lines and you can apply that to many different disciplines of the sport regardless of your physiological ability but it does mean that they're far more manageable psychologically and Brad has said that trying to look at this as one effort as one hour is um, you're almost defeated before you've started. So the best way to do it is just to focus on a series of mini finish lines and take it step by step and tick them off as you go. And that gives you more of a sense of control as the laps tick by. And you can expect in the last half, half an hour of this race for the crowd to really get behind this rider. Hasn't missed a beat at all. And just looking at his cadence there, putting the clock on it, it is around 100 RPM that he's turning. 58 teeth on the front, 18 teeth on the back. On a bike that's been developed by Pinarello in tandem with Jaguar. And if you look very, very close, it's a completely, it's very, very bladed, it's very aerodynamic. The rear triangle, very, very narrow. And also the forks, especially, generally, on a bike, even with a disc wheel, you could get your fingers in between the surface of the disc and the forks, but the forks remarkably close to the wheel, again, to reduce as much drag as possible. And apparently this Pinarello bully is actually 7.5% faster than the road version. This is basically a bespoke version of the road frame that we've seen uh, Bradley Wiggins take so many so many races, so many race wins, and including the Olympic Games and including last year's World Time Trial Championships. 
as another lap passes by en route to what he hopes and everybody in this stadium hopes will be a new mark. But I must admit, Bradley Wiggins, as he walked into the, the velodrome today, looks so much, he looks like he'd shaved 10 years of his age by just removing that beard. It looks like we're looking at a Bradley Wiggins circa Athens 2004. 35 years of age now, of course, born in 1980 in Belgium. So almost half Belgium, really, is Brad, but a real historian, loves the rich history of this sport and feels it's almost an obligation for him, given the fact he's so decorated, is, of course, a Tour de France champion, an Olympic champion, and a world champion, a multiple national champion too, as well as medals in the Olympic Games and the Commonwealth Games. And wants to put himself alongside the likes of Eddie Merckx, Jacques Anquetil, but would like to walk away from this hour and never have to do it again. A few interesting quote, quotes from some of the past riders who've tackled this hour. If you look back, to Graham O'Brien, a flamboyant Scottish rider, very, very likeable character indeed, and one of the pioneers, one of the most interesting characters, I think, in cycling as a whole, who broke the, uh, first broke the mark back in 1993 in Norway, set the mark of 51.596. He described riding the hour as like drilling holes in your teeth, and I think that says a lot. It really is hellish. And I say it really is hellish. I've never tried it myself. I've done some, some time trolling in my time, but nothing like this at all. And I dread to imagine the pain that is going to be coursing through the legs and body of Bradley Wiggins in about 40 minutes' time. you've been coach and mentor to Bradley Wiggins for many years. You know how he works psychologically. How will he be harnessing the incredible energy in here so it doesn't become detrimental? Well, at this moment in time, as he's riding around, I'd like to think that he's not thinking about the crowd at all. Uh, he'll be locked on, he'll be, he'll be focusing on his pacing, he'll be focusing on his coach who's moving up and down the line. Every lap he's getting feedback. Um, it's at a hundredth of a second on, on what his previous lap was, so he can gauge his effort. So he'll be focusing on his feel, concentrating on his line, sticking on the black line. He'll be looking at Heiko, he'll be getting feedback from Heiko and adjusting his pace accordingly. He won't be hearing the crowd much at this moment. He set himself an incredibly difficult target, hasn't he? Not just breaking the world record, but getting 55.25 kilometers. Why would he add to the pressure of what is already a phenomenally difficult thing to do? Well, I think there's, you know, trying to break a record and just trying to get over the line, as it were, and then trying to smash it out of the park. And I think if you're going to, if you're going to do anything serious, you know, you've got to be, be ambitious. We all know that you tend to, you know, the people who do big things, you aim, you know, you get what you aim for. You might as well aim high. And Bradley works off that, you know, big, ambitious, scary goals. He thrives on the back of that, and that's what he's done here and set himself a big task. But so far, I'd say he's looking really good. I was going to ask you that just finally. You've seen him go around velodromes many, many times. How do you think he's looking? How's his performance doing so far? At the minute, I think he's looking controlled, uh, which is what you want to see at this point in the ride. Um, his, his feedback, obviously, from high goes good. He's not oscillated much lap to lap. He came out maybe, maybe a tinsy wincy little bit strong, but then he settled down. And when Bradley settles down into a rhythm like this, you know, if he can hold this now for the next 20, 25 minutes and then build to the final, He's in a great, with a great shout. So Dave Brailsford, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Well, there we go. As the views and opinions of Sir Dave Brailsford. Been with Bradley Wiggins for the last five years, of course, and before that, as part of Team Sky. But Wiggins now has moved on from Team Sky and has said that he, fe he felt it's uh, almost been quite liberating compared to the, the high pressure environment of working, of riding a Grand Tour. But at the moment, the pace that's being set by Wiggins at the moment, absolutely phenomenal. Average speed of 54.556 kilometers an hour, which equates to just under 34 miles an hour. 
so 50 seconds inside already. Just short of the pace that he'll need to break the time that he's actually set. So 55.250 is what he's working on. But at the moment, not panicking at all. And we've seen uh, riders over the last few months, particularly a uh, uh, couple of the Australian riders, Bobridge in particular, went out very, very fast indeed and just kept dropping off. He, appro he approached the hour in a completely different way. And when you look at Alex Dowsett, maybe learnt from the, the mistakes of other riders and opted for a very reserved start and an absolutely stellar last portion or the last 10 or 15 minutes for Alex Dowsett. He accelerated and just essentially let rip. Slight drift there just above the, the red line for Wiggins, but still looking remarkably smooth. Hardly missed a beat at all. It's not risen out of the saddle. Occasionally you do see that. You, we saw Jens Vok do that. And we saw Alex Dowsett do that. He did worry the crowd when Dowsett was around nine seconds behind the time of Rowan Dennis. But sometimes you just have to. If any of you out there have actually ridden on one of these low-profile machines, it's a completely different position than riding on your road bike. And that's why we increasingly see many of the top-level professionals not so much the track stars, but the riders who wish to per perform well in stage races. They need to get attuned to riding in this position. But riding on the road on a low profile, profile bike and a TT bike is one thing, but riding for an hour without even able to get out, out, of, get out of the saddle, without the ability to rest. Remember, riding on a fixed gear here, completely different feeling to riding on a road machine. But the speed at the moment is going up again, 54.577 kilometers an hour. And again, that's around 600 meters at the moment, faster than Alex Dowsett or further. 82 laps in and well inside the world record at the moment. As the crowd urges him on. But again, as Sir Dave Brailsford said, It'll be almost like tunnel vision for Wiggins now. The sound that he'll hear, especially given the fact that he's enclosed inside that helmet, will be the sound of his own breathing. The sound of his heart beating in his head. As the, tried, the crowd try to get behind him, but again, it's all about this individual effort, and this is what Bradley Wiggins does so well. He knows his limitations. 57 seconds again and speed creeping up at the moment as the laps tick by Bradley Wiggins metronomic effortless ordered and very very simple just pedals his bike round and round does make it look so 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 simple Is coming to the end of the second 12 minute segment and this is where he said he expects the pain to start to bite and there we go end of segment two in brad's words and into the third segment of 12 minutes which will be ticking off mentally and just trying to keep that that level as smooth as possible and no other rider currently can do what brad does he really is a maestro and a master of his art. You could argue in a straight line, Fabian Cancellara and Tony Martin are more powerful, but when it comes to applying the power in this sort of environment, on the track with this completely different feel, with the different Gs that are applied when you go around the bends, and the corners of this track, very, very different than riding on the road, and that's why Brad Wiggins has dedicated virtually the entire last seven weeks to riding on this velodrome, to try and perfect his condition, to try and put this hour completely and utterly out of reach. And will we see another rider in this current generation who attempts to take it back? But the one thing that will play perhaps into the hands of other riders looking at this record and know Alex Dowsett may like to do it, are the atmospheric conditions. But time will tell.
breaking the hour down into those 12 minute blocks for me. It's kind of how I get through the whole thing, really. I don't look at it as one hour. It's a bit like a three week tour or any other long cycle race you do. You never think, I oh, have 55 minutes left of this. <laughs> you know, because I think that's the worst thing you can do. It's such a bad state of mind to be in and a bad way of thinking about it. So it's always just that remaining positive, thinking in small chunks, small little finish lines every. Because that way I've found that it passes a hell of a lot quicker and a lot easier as well. So it's very much just after the first 12 minutes, focusing on that next 12, which is just to, you know, sustaining the pace of, of what you've been given. It should start to bite a little bit at the end of that second 12 minute block. Well, there you go, the words of the man himself, just taking us through the way that he psychologically breaks this down. And again, into that third set of 12 minutes. Will we see any indication of the pain that, he's, that he will no doubt be feeling? As that lactic acid starts to build up in his legs, how much can he tolerate? And will we see an even distribution of effort? We heard Dave Brailsford say that uh, Brad Wiggins started out just a little bit fast, but Heiko Zalzwedel, his coach, just told him to calm down and he backed off. And it won't be very long before he reaches the halfway stage. 26 minutes and 52 seconds at the moment. Again, when you reach the halfway point, that is a big psychological barrier, barrier to have broken through. But 54-6-10, again, the speed creeping up all the time. Will it get to the point where he breaks the 55 kilometers an hour barrier? And as we said, working on 55.250. The fastest record ever set, of course, is by Chris Boardman. But given the atmospheric conditions, I think that is going to be a little bit out of reach. And many other observers think the same. Now, Boardman's record set on the 6th of September 1996 was 56.375 kilometers an hour in that Superman position. And that previously beat the time of Tony Rominger of 55.291. And it's 55.291. That is the mark that Bradley Wiggins is riding to today. And as I say, the, spe the speed, the average speed creeping up slightly now. If you look at the way riders have ridden this recently, the best thing to do is have just a little bit in reserve. But ultimately, when you cross the line, you want to know that you've, you're totally and utterly spent. And Chris Boardman, when he achieved his record, said that uh, he was pleased with it. And... If he were to ride it again, he'd have done it in exactly the same way. And without a shadow of a doubt, this, that is the way that Bradley Wiggins would like to finish this event, totally and utterly spent, with no regrets, aside perhaps from the atmospheric conditions, but there's nothing he can do about that now, apart from to go as fast as he can, for as long as he can. Look at that, 33.939 miles an hour. Again, we've got another five kilometers an hour or point a point zero zero five kilometers an hour increase in speed so the speed slowly slowly starting to creep up but when you look back to when he won his individual time trial gold at the world championships last year it was a very very measured effort and it was in the last 10 k's that he took around 20 seconds plus out of tony martin the course did, the course did suit bradley wiggins with the climbs near the end but again, an absolute master at measuring his efforts. But we certainly want to finish today absolutely spent. So still the laps tick by. 30 seconds now to the halfway point. What will the average speed be at 30 minutes? It's creeping up again. 54.621 now. 108 laps completed well under the world record pace unless something absolutely catastrophic happens now so bradley wiggins the olympic time trial champion the world time trial champion will set a new mark it's just about how far can he go now how much can he push himself how much can he hurt himself eddie Merckx, when he set that famous record way back in 1972 Hurt himself so, so badly. 
that he said he was never the same rider again. This is what this hour can do to you. So now we're under. We're over halfway. And the distance, 54.626. It's creeping up all the time. It seems that Bradley Wiggins is managing to find even more pace. The speed rising all the time, remember. The mark he's uh, aiming for, 55.250. A few tweets there, go on Sir Brad, the pain is temporary, the greatness is eternal, legend, hashtag, my hour. Another lap ticks by, the clock ticks by, and again interesting when you read some of the very, very fascinating interviews that give an insight into how Sir Bradley Wiggins has worked on this hour and the way he can actually break things down is that um, this is just temporary. There is an end point and that to him makes all the difference. Whether it's one hour, whether it's a three week tour, it does end. And it was uh, Sir James Cracknell that he learned that from. And it's something that he's uh, held quite close. So it is just temporary. And once you're done, you can walk away. But in the meantime, there's still Another 28 minutes of pain, which will get increasingly worse and worse as the end game approaches. Another lap goes by. Wiggins in his gold Juro lace-up shoes. Interesting that he's gone for lace-up shoes in, t in relation to the aerodynamics. But he posted on Instagram a picture of those shoes that he's very, very proud of. And the gold helmet there. Almost a full sleeve tattoo on his right hand side, not opting for any gloves. And in contrast to the, the skin suit that Alex Dowsett wore for his hour record, has gone for sleeves that just go above the elbows. So again, interesting thoughts in relation to aerodynamics. And Alex Dowsett record, there's almost a continuum in relation to developing the skin suit that he wore. And he only got the final version just a couple of days before his hour ride. But I must admit, I'm a big, big fan of this, uh, this Wiggins kit. It harks back to the days, or well, the 1980s, and the GB kit of days gone by, where it was uh, black shorts and the top was just blue with the red sleeves. So again, Bradley Wiggins, not just an athlete, but a historian, a connoisseur, he appreciates the rich textured history of this sport. And again, this is one of the reasons why he feels obliged to go for this most difficult of, our, of, uh, of records, the hardest record. He wants to put it up there with the greats. And his description of holding on to the end is basically, it's all about holding on for grim death. And again, this really, to him, is cycling in its purest, purest form. One person against themselves, against time. And how much pain can he tolerate? An interesting shot there from track centre. It's quite dizzy, dizzying when you're watching a, a track event from the centre. Sometimes the best view is from the sides. And of course, Bradley Wiggins just thinking about his solo effort now. Here we go. Some more comments on Twitter there. If Wigger had shaved his beard off to make him more aero, he's just got even cooler. Hashtag my hour. Well, again, surely some research has been done. Although there are some schools of thought that suggest that actually having a beard is slightly more aerodynamic. But we shall soon see. But again, very, very uh, balmy temperatures, upwards of uh, 28 degrees in the velodrome. Again, the warmer the temperature, the faster you go, but it's about striking the balance. You can't get it too warm, so you overheat, especially given the aerodynamic helmets these riders are wearing. It's almost like a boil in the bag feeling. And of course, no recourse to any feeding, so no, no fluids can be taken on. So hydration, absolutely crucial to get right in this event. And there we go, lap 127, 54.620. So the pace gradually notching up ever so subtly but constantly and very very smoothly hardly any significant fluctuation but just enough just enough 
to be putting this record further and further ahead to well inside world record pace. It's just how high and how far can Sir Bradley Wiggins push this record now? And will we see a big surge in the last 10 or 12 minutes or will we see just a very gradual increase all the way to the line? With Alex Dowsett's record, we saw almost like an explosion within the last 10 minutes and I think the effort from Bradley Wiggins will be far less discernible. But I think we will see an increase in pace towards the back end. 54, 6, 1, 6 now. Moving slowly nearer his aim of 55.250 kilometres in the hour. And that equates to 221 laps. Some quite remarkable speeds. Lots of many, many cyclists wouldn't even be able to sprint at this speed. 33 miles an hour, let alone sustaining this relentless high pace for an hour it is almost unimaginable very very few athletes can ride at this sort of pace for even five or ten minutes let alone an hour so what you are watching is really something quite incredible and here's the man yet again for a few more words the third 12 minute is where you really have to push through and remain concentrated um, and make sure you don't lose the rate and when it starts settle in that this is quite difficult um, it's easy at that point to start thinking well I've got half an hour of this to go this is ridiculous I can't do it and so at that point people back off but if you've got it in you and you've worked hard enough mentally to not look beyond that 12 minutes as if that was your finish line the end of the third 12 minutes then you sort of have a mental countdown six minutes to go five minutes to go and then you're into what is essentially your last 12 minute block and I just focus purely on that then here are some more words from Sir Bradley Wiggins. Extremely interesting insight to the way that he breaks this event down. Almost matter of fact, but believe you me, it certainly isn't that at all as he continues to lap. As other people track tend to go about their business, the man in gold, blue and red continues his own personal battle and the speed holding steady again at the moment, 54.615, no, 54 it's gone up again, just marginally. But his speed on a constantly gradual upward trajectory as he laps this Lee Valley Velo Park. Now this is a place that back in the 1980s, 1990s, was where Bradley Wiggins first raced a bike. It was the old Eastway cycling circuit. A circuit that I've raced on many, many times. And even the likes of Eddie Merckx have raced on the Eastway circuit. Of course, now we have the Olympic Velodrome, and this was the scene. This, of course, was the Velodrome used for the 2012 Olympic Games. And the finish straight at Eastway, which was a, a mile-long circuit, is actually where this Velodrome has been placed now. So for Sir Bradley Wiggins, it's come full circle. It's where he learned his trade and where he started his route to the history books. He said when he was only 12 years of age that he wanted to uh, wear the yellow jersey in the Tour de France. He's done that. He's done more than that. He's won the Tour de France. And he also wanted to win an Olympic gold medal. And he's done that. And he aims to become in Rio in 2016 the most decorated Olympian of all time. But en route to that is the hour record. And next up, following the hour record for Sir Bradley Wiggins, is the European Championships in Switzerland. And then early next year will be the 2016 World Track Championships before the Olympic Games. We might actually see him on British roads. He'll probably make an appearance at the Tour of Britain in the latter part of this year for his fledgling Wiggins team. But at the moment, it's all about this. The hour again, another marginal increase in speed now up to 617 from 616 an absolute master at work at measuring the effort hardly any fluctuations at all and what you need to appreciate as well when you're riding on the road in a long straight line it's very easy let's make an assumption that you've got uh, non-windy conditions you can ride at a very constant effort but every time you reach the banking 
your application of power needs to change. If you push too hard in the bank and you can drift up, so you need to back off slightly and then reapply on the straights. And then of course there's the G-force and the constant leaning to the left-hand side as well. All of these things cannot be replicated anywhere else. And this is why Sir Bradley Wiggins for the last seven weeks has had an almost monastic existence. Training on the track and putting out some absolutely fantastic times. He went on Instagram a few weeks back to show some of the kilometre times that he'd been lapping in and he was lapping in 105 and when you look back through the record books at kilometre times you'd be regarded as one of the finest kilometre riders in the world if you could actually do a standing start kilometre at 1 minute and 4, 1 minute and 5 seconds but these, this is the pace that this man is lapping constantly again just another reason why what he's actually doing today is something quite quite special Another round of applause as he goes through the finishing straight. 6-2-1 now, 54-6-2-1 is the time. Is the distance, sorry. Still creeping up. Showing so much control and self-restraint. But still making it look so effortless. This really is a virtuoso performance of power and discipline. 54.618 is his average speed at the moment. Does he have enough left to take it through to 55 kilometers an hour? Will he breach that almost mystical 55 kilometers an hour barrier? 42 minutes on the clock. 18 minutes to go of this hour record. The hashtag is my hour. And this is what Bradley Wiggins wants to make it. He wants to make this his own. He wants to walk away and never have to do this again. And you can just see, if you look closely at his face, there is a little bit of pain. I say a little bit. There is some pain etched on there. In that first 12 minutes, 20 minutes, he looked very, very calm. There was no real indication that he was in any sort of distress, but he expected that. He knew the first 12 minutes would be relatively easy, given the context of the entire ride. But this is the part of the race that is becoming extremely difficult now. And you can tell on his face now, gritting his teeth. This is hurting Sir Bradley Wiggins. He is going very, very deep indeed now. We're going to have a few words from Sebastian Coe with Ola. Well, we are in the middle of the track, Lord Seb Co is having a little go himself. Uh, Lord Co, how are you faring? It's hard. As a former Not as hard as it is for him, though. As a former professional athlete, can you quantify just how difficult a challenge this actually is? I think what he's doing out there is exceptional. You know, we're doing this here, we've got everybody around us. He's on his own. There's no help, only this extraordinary crowd. Very reminiscent of the kind of noise they made at the games. And that can be a fantastic boost as long as it doesn't get the adrenaline pumping too much. How much of that, how much of a help will that be? Especially in the last 15 minutes when he's really pushing against it. The crowd are going to be everything. I mean, he's about a minute and a half up on site inside the schedule. Sport is cruel. Things can unravel very quickly, but he's really focusing and it's this is tough there can't be many things in sport tougher than what this guy is attempting today fantastic i'll let you get back to the pedaling thank you thank you some interesting words there from lord co himself of course a former olympic champion way back in the 1980s but fully behind sir bradley wiggins as the crowd is now the mexican wave has started He's nearly into the last quarter of this effort and his face etched now with pain in total contrast to the serene countenance that we saw in the opening few laps and minutes of this hour record. Bradley Wiggins now having to dig very, very deep into his reserves as he continues to press on 54, well over 54 kilometers an hour, 54.616, it's dropped, dropped down ever so slightly just under 34 miles an hour 
So Bradley Wiggins hardly missing a beat though in the run-up to this event for this year. Rode in the Tour of Qatar, then the Omloop Het Noisblad. Then he went on to Paris-Nice, then Genvevelgem, and then the three days of Depanu where he won a stage and finished third overall and took the only win in the World Championship stripes in the individual time trial there for him. That was very, very special for him. Then he went on to the Tour of Flanders, then the Shelder Priest, then took an extremely brave 18th place in Paris-Roubaix before the three days of the Tour of Yorkshire and then it was full focus on this seven weeks of discipline, seven weeks of focus, 54.614 kilometres an hour now, the pace not going up, hardly going down, he's keeping it steady, is he holding anything back? It certainly doesn't look like it on his face. He is certainly in an absolute world of pain. One thing's for sure at the moment, unless something completely unforeseen happens, is that Bradley Wiggins will set a new world record. He'll have set the bar very, very high indeed. It's looking very difficult for him to break the 55 kilometers an hour barrier, but if there's anybody that can do it, it's Sir Bradley Wiggins. One of the most decorated Olympians of all time and one of the most multi-talented cyclists of all time. Olympic pursuit champion, Tour de France winner. Back in 2011, took the Dauphiné, won that again in 2012 in that quite remarkably, well, that incredible run-up he had to his Tour de France win, won the Dauphiné, Paris-Nice, the Tour of Romandie, before he took a famous victory in the Tour de France. That just shows how versatile this rider is, turning his hand now to something that he feels is important, something that has an integrity. He feels it's his duty to try and break the hour record, at least attempt it. And at the moment, he's on course to doing that. When you look back at some of the names in the pantheon of sport, including, of course, the likes of Eddie Merckx, but the recent record was as so. Chris Boardman, back in 2000, set a mark of 49.441, but remember, that was on a normal road bike, and that was beaten by Andrei Sosenska, 49.7 in 2004, before Voigt, Brendley, Dennis and Dowsett, and now Sir Bradley Wiggins. And then you get to your final kind of third in Manila, round, four, round 14, and and you just deal with it then, you know, you know it's coming, but you've no, no choice, you've got to go through it. It's a bit like a woman having a baby or something, you know, you know that that's coming, it's going to be horrendous, as many other analogies you could use. And you get on with it, and once it's done, it's, it's finished, and I think that, that's what you always look forward to. It's like, and that's what's got me through so many time trials in the past, like the last 6 or 7k in London. I remember coming through Kingston, and the noise was something I've never experienced before, probably won't experience again unless the people cheer for me on the night. And I remember just counting down each kilometre thinking, in 15 minutes you're going to be finished and you do what the hell you like with the rest of your life. So, that, you know, there is always an end to something. Wiggins now into the final 12 minutes that he's just described to you there. This is absolute hell. But of course, as well as fighting the pain, he needs to keep control. This is what this discipline is all about. It's a combination of things. But first and foremost, it's the ability to control, to maintain control. And this is the most controlled environment. And this is what Bradley Wiggins thrive on. You have the remarkably wide variables of something like the Tour de France. But when you distill the sport down to its essence, it's here in the velodrome where the only variables are what you can do yourself. It's all about, well, 90% is the mass of this person, or Bradley Wiggins moving through the air, and then 10% rolling resistance. So the importance of aerodynamics, absolutely essential. No expense spared in terms of the research and development gone in to making sure he's using all of the most aerodynamic equipment, even down to the 3D design handlebars. 
We understand they're the first 3D printed handlebars. Completely bespoke. And that very familiar tuck that we're used to seeing as he relentlessly laps. But now his face contorted into a grimace, but still turning the pedals seemingly effort effortlessly, although his face etched with pain, his shoulders hardly rocking at all, just showing the amount of control that Bradley Wiggins has, the amount of poise, almost elegant on a bike. But the speed has dipped ever so slightly. 54.587 at the moment, but it's still constant. Hardly missed a beat for the whole of this ride. One of the most remarkable things about this ride so far is the even distribution of power. Just showing how much control Bradley Wiggins has. Perhaps due to the, the, uh, the conditions, the very high pressure that we're seeing in London today. Perhaps the distance not quite what he wanted to reach. Remember the mark that he'd set himself was 55.250. And that's a very big ask at the moment. They've only got about eight and a half minutes of this effort to go. But still, relentlessly presses on. The crowd fully behind Sir Bradley Wiggins. A sellout crowd here, willing him on. But he'll be in a complete and utter world of pain now. That's the first time I've seen his head rock at all. Just looks down. Perhaps looking down at his feet, pedalling. There's the signal from Zalzvedel on the left-hand side there. Another lap passes by. His legs will be absolutely burning, full of lactic acid. The pain in his lungs, almost unbearable. But this is where the sport at this level becomes almost an art form. Many years ago, Chris Boardman who set this record, compared time trialling or the individual time trial discipline as a dark art, and believe you me, that is what it is. It's a, a certain pedigree of riders can do this to themselves, essentially torturing himself on a bike. And this really is a Herculean effort by Sir Bradley Wiggins. A masterful display of poise and power as the crowd roar him on. 54.570 is the mark at the moment. So well above the mark set by Alex Dowsett. Uh, almost a kilometre, well, a kilometre and a half further than Alex Dowsett's record set a few, a couple of months back. Just under 34 miles an hour. Coming into the last seven minutes now. And still the crowd roar him on. His family are here. His wife, Kath, and his children, Ben and Isabella, will be there to greet him. We understand. Also, Miguel Indurain is also here, a former holder of the record way back in 1994. He set a mark of 53.040 in Bordeaux. Some absolute legends of the sport, of course, holding this record in the past. But will this be the mark that sets, or that continues the race, or will this be the mark that deters? Who knows? But one thing's for sure, or so we're led to believe that Bradley Wiggins will not attempt this again. But I don't think we can ever say ever. Still he forges on. Trying to squeeze that last bit of energy out, but still just under six minutes of effort still to go. 54.557 is the average speed at the moment. Does he have anything left in the tank to lift it? At this point, in Alex Dowsett's record, we saw a real difference in the trajectory. An increase of speed that he took to the line. But if anything, this is more of a constant effort. This is what we expected. Bradley Wiggins, a more, perhaps a more disciplined, measured effort than Dowsett. Although, to be fair, to the rider from Essex on the Mobistar team, he did look back and think he could have had a little bit more in the tank. And will we see Alex Dowsett go for it again? But it, at the moment, it's all about this man clad in blue and red and gold. The Olympic in individual time trial champion, the world time trial champion. One of the most decorated Olympians of all time. Still he presses on, he starts to breathe. 
Still he keeps that very, very good line. Hardly starting to waver, needs to keep it as close to the black line as he can without drifting up above that red line. Drops his head ever so slightly, but still no real rocking of the shoulders. And given the effort that this man has put in over the last 55 minutes, quite remarkable that we're not seeing his body swaying side to side. A real master at work, plying his trade and trying to put himself into the record books. And this is what he set out to do. He set out to make history. And at the moment, that is what Sir Bradley Wiggins is doing. Quite incredible scenes here at the Lee Valley Velodrome. The crowd willing their man on. And still he laps. Is there anything left? Can he lift it anymore? 54.549 is the average speed at the moment. We're into the last four minutes of the effort. 205 laps has been completed. The aim for 221 laps. It doesn't appear that is going to be the case. That now is nigh on impossible. But it's all about how far can Sir Bradley Wiggins go now. Still he presses on. Oblivious to perhaps the crowd. He'll be almost experiencing tunnel vision at the moment. The pain will be so great. This is a man, remember, that his own wife, Kath, said in training can make himself be sick. It's almost an incomprehensible psychology, an incomprehensible place that this man has the ability to put himself into. He loves this sport so, so dearly. He cares about the sport. But what he is willing to do is take himself to a place that he does not want to revisit. Almost hell on earth. Again, to use his own words. This is a display of raw power under control and we're now into the last three minutes of this effort 54.538 is the mark he's setting at the moment 209 laps way inside world record pace he will set a new mark there will be a new world hour record what will that mark be how much more does sir bradley wiggins have left in the tank the crowd are on their feet they're urging their man on He's not just an icon of the sport, he's an icon of sport. A man that many youngsters will be inspired to be like. And a real rarity as he continues on into the last couple of minutes. The crowd still on their feet, willing their man on. Another lap passes by and hardly a rock on those shoulders. Opens his mouth now, gulping in the air in mute protest at the pain coursing through his 35-year-old body. Pressing on relentlessly, pedal stroke after pedal stroke. What an absolutely amazing display of strength and discipline by this man. He will rewrite history. And all we're getting from his coach at the side there, Heiko Zalzwedel, it's just punching the ground, just keep forcing it, keep forcing it. It's not about pace now, it's about, it's about how much you can hold on. Just let rip, you need to finish empty. You basically need to almost destroy yourself from within to set a mark that will stand for a very, very long time indeed. 54.524, it's dropped off ever so slightly, but a pace that is so, so, so even and so controlled. A real masterful performance here from one of the utter greats of this discipline, of the time trial discipline, of the individual effort, of focus. Another lap goes by and the head hardly moving at all, but the mouth still wide open, gulping in this warm air, nearly 27 degrees, 28 degrees in here, an absolute cauldron of pain. A crucible of hurt. We're into the last few seconds as he presses on. Bradley Wiggins, the average speed now, 54, 526, as he presses on into the last lap. That's it, the hour is over. We'll get confirmation of the time, but what is for sure is that Sir Bradley Wiggins has set a new world hour record. 
What an absolutely wonderful display of power by Sir Bradley Wiggins. 54-5-3-1 is the new mark that has been set by Sir Bradley Wiggins as he slowly rounds the track, gulping in the air. That was a picture just before of his wife, Kath, will no doubt greet him at last. He has the strength to punch the air. He could hardly raise himself off the bars. He'd gone so deep, no strength even to take his hands off the handlebars. And at no point during his effort today did he even raise himself out of the saddle. He has perfected this. It's down to a fine art. He waves to the crowd, punches the air yet again. The record is his. 54.4 kilometres. We will get confirmation of the exact distance very, very shortly. But a quite fantastic time. And all of you today have witnessed something extremely special. You've witnessed history being made by one of the greats of this sport. And will there be anybody with the courage and the confidence to take on this record in the near future? Will we see Alex Dowsett? Will we see Fabian Cancellara? Will we see anybody step up to the mark to try and wrestle this quite remarkable record? And there he is. Does he have the strength to raise his bike? And yeah, he does. Takes off the helmet. Nearly slips. It's a hug from his coach there. Can hardly hold himself up. Bradley Wiggins has taken so much out of himself there. Just needs a little bit of space. There's his kids. There's the kiss from Kath. And a hug from his children. Ben and Isabella there to see their dad. He takes a towel. There's that little nonchalant swagger that we're so used to seeing. Another cheer from the crowd. He salutes the crowd for the support that they've given them. The new look Bradley Wiggins, almost a retro look. Congratulations on the screen there. He sits down, there's a replication there of the throne. The throne that we saw back in, well there, 54, 5, 2, 6 is the new mark. So again, well over a kilometre and a half further than the previous mark set by Alex Dowsett. And I'm pretty sure that is a record that will stand for some time. And I wonder who will step up to the fray. Will it be with the likes of Matthias Grendley, Old Rowan Dennis, the previous record holder? Or will Alex Dowsett have another go? But for the time being, it's all about this man. He's up again. He's done his victory signs. I think what we might see in a moment is maybe a little bit of a warm down, but no, it's a, it's a chat with his family. It's another hug for Kath. Ah, he actually looks... <laughs> relatively unperturbed now all the the signs we saw before he could hardly hold himself up we will stay through to the uh, victory ceremony and we get confirmation of the new time set and there will be some protocol but now he can bask in the glory of the new mark that he has set 54.526 kilometers an hour that is the new mark. And there we go. He might afford himself a little cruise round on his bike, stick it in a low gear. A lap of honour, perhaps. A symbolic lap of honour. Another objective achieved for Sir Bradley Wiggins. Thumbs up. Appreciates the support given to him by his home crowd. Remember, this is where he started out as a youngster on his bike on this very location where the track is situated now 
It used to be the Eastway cycle circuit, a cycle that I myself have ridden on. One of the only closed circuits in Great Britain back in the day, but now replaced by this velodrome. It was especially built for the London Olympics back in 2012. And again, it does look like the Bradley Wiggins that we saw back in, uh, in 2012, when he had that short hair, no beard. I wonder if he'll grow that beard back. Or whether we'll see him shaven for the next Olympics. But some interesting socks. If you look very closely at those socks, they look like they've actually got a zip on the back. It's quite interesting, a bit of detailing there. He's got the uh, gold Giro socks. And I know those socks that he's wearing specially made. And the UCI uh, stip stipulate that the socks cannot go above the equidistant point between the ankle bone and the knee. So they'd have been specially measured before the race. But we're going to be cutting to uh, Ola Chinui on the track side. Which hopefully be having a chat with uh, Sir Bradley Wiggins or at least uh, somebody else to have a review back. And some thoughts on what just occurred. We're just taking now his energy drink. Just replacing some of those lost fluids. Remember, in the hour record, no chance at all to refuel. It's a vitally important pre-event that you're fully hydrated. And of course, post-event, extremely important. You get as much on board within as few minutes as possible. Jim, what coaches have coined the golden window. So some, uh, some protein shakes there for Sir Brad. As the crowd get ready and move towards the place where he'll be awarded not officially uh, officially awarded the placard with the new distance of 54.526 I'm delighted to be joined trackside now by Heiko Salzbedel who has coached Sir Bradley Wiggins through this incredible feat. Heiko, you must be delighted. How do you feel? I'm over the moon. I'm over the moon. And uh, I really say that that is one of the highlights of my career and of Bradley's career. And we share this memory for a long time. What has the last 60 minutes been like for you? It must have been nerve-wracking. It was nerve-wracking because I I'm, I'm, have seen that Bradley was running out of gas and he was fighting, fighting, fighting. I never saw him fighting so hard before. Compared to your race plan then, how did it go? Uh, it goes pretty well actually. We had a very good preparation all together. Of course, you're learning here, you're learning there. Also working together with Bradley, it's a different level of what, of what I have experienced before. He had hoped to get 55.25 kilometers, just shy of that. Will there be any regret over that, do you think? Absolutely not. I mean, we had incredible high air pressure here. It was very sticky air, and uh, it it's makes a hell of a difference. Yeah? Everybody was waiting here in London for the sun. We have been waiting for the rain. He wanted to put this record beyond reach for the next foreseeable years. Has he done that? Um, put it that way. It's, it's a, he, he pushed the bar very far, but not far enough. Great, well congratulations, enjoy your moment. Thank you, Heiko. Thank you very much. Some interesting words there from the coach of Bradley Wiggins, who was walking the line today. Again, as we said at the top of the programme, the uh, atmospheric conditions absolutely crucial. As we see the replay, at the start, the first few laps. So, some rugby wins. He's written himself into the history books with a new distance of 54.526 kilometres an hour. And how long will the new record stand for? And who will step up? Because that is a mark that is going to be very, very difficult to beat. But the one caveat to that, I guess, especially when we look at what Heiko Zvalsvedel was saying, was that the atmospheric pressure was very, very high. Ideally, uh, the atmospheric pressure to get the optimum performance and the, and the least air to cut Man, through the back of the break, guys. would have been 
below 1,000. And I think the optimum uh, pressure that they were looking for was around 850 millibars. But today it was well over 1,000. I understand it was around 1,080 or 1,100 millibars of pressure. Whereas a few days ago it was remarkably lower. And they did a recon of the course, or the recon ride, sorry, of the track at around an hour before. And that's when they finally decided on the gear that uh, Bradley Wiggins was going to use. So they readjusted their effort, although they had set the mark of 55.250, which equated to 221 laps of this 200 feet, 50 meter track. And to readjust that and work on a slightly different schedule, but Bradley Wiggins, as Heiko was saying, was really suffering at the end and uh, has never seen Bradley Wiggins go so deep. But again, when you look at the graph that we just saw briefly on the screen, the effort was remarkably measured and probably one of the most measured efforts that we've seen, especially in relation to the last few efforts. When you look at Alex Dowsett, there was a, an upward trajectory all the way, rode um, conservatively for the first part and then really let rip in the second, second well, the, the last 10 minutes of his effort and reached 52.937. And then, of course, there was uh, the effort of uh, Jens Vogt, which fluctuated at a hard beginning, a steady middle, and then a hard end. But again, Jens himself using the opportunity to put himself into the record books. But when you compare his, uh, his ability to ride on the track to, to Sir Bradley Wiggins, very, very different indeed. But I think Jens Vogt was just proud to get himself in the record books. And also the remarkable amount of publicity that now surrounds this event for not only his sponsors, but the bike manufacturers. It has a new, it's always been a very, well, more than credible event, but now it uh, has added prestige with the quality riders that have attempted it. Of course, Vox, and then we had Matthias Brendley, Rowan Dennis, Alex Dowsett, three of those riders, essentially the new gen generation, some of the most gifted time trialists currently riding on the world circuit. And I think there's definitely more to come from those three riders, and maybe we'll see Dennis attempt it. But I'm interested to see if Fabian Cancellara has a go at this, but he has gone rather quiet over the last few months in relation to his own efforts. But um, Bradley Wiggins changed his mind only 12 months ago. He was actually saying that he hadn't even thought about doing it. It was only when he was spoken to at the, uh, the Tour of California, a race that he went on to win last year, that he thought that it was uh, achievable. And again, what he does do, what he has uh, a remarkable knack of doing is, is basically setting objectives and ticking them off and uh, with that comes a quite rare self-confidence and self-belief and that uh, in relation to just setting targets it's also in relation to achieving targets as well he set a very very high benchmark it wasn't to be unfortunately nowhere quite near the 55.250 but partly due definitely to the atmospheric conditions but nonetheless a quite remarkable mark that he has now set today Well, we have watched history made tonight. Sir Bradley Wiggins has won four Olympic gold medals, seven world titles, and became the first British winner of the Tour de France. He is now a world record holder. He broke that world record, and he covered 54.526 kilometers in an hour. Watching for us, Dame Sarah Story, who got the British record in February this year, and Rob Hales, a close friend of Sir Bradley Wiggins, and also won two gold medals with him as well. And Dame Sarah, you were watching that. Was that the perfect record? It was absolutely sensational. You watched him go very smoothly till maybe 45 minutes, maybe a little bit over, and then in that final 12 minutes, as he was talking about in his previous interviews, it was a place that he'd never been to before, a place where he really had to rally and dig deep. And as Heiko said on the uh, interview as well, he'd never seen Bradley suffer in that way before. But that's where you find out what you're made of as an athlete. And it really was absolutely it's sensational, very impressive. Well, Rob, you can watch that last 10 minutes. I was watching it here with you, and you can watch it. And the pain on Bradley's face, but then he got off the bike. Not only did he get off the bike, he lifted it aloft and did a lap of honour. The man's yeah, well, steel. Uh... <laughs> I think when, when you when you win, say win, it, it, when you get the record or if you if you get the victory, then certainly yeah, it, it doesn't matter what's gone on before. You can find that strength from somewhere. But it, it was around about 12 minutes to go, which is obviously 
correct in, in the way that he judged his, his effort that it just started, his face just started to go and I and then it was about three minutes, I couldn't look at him anymore. I was getting trackside, getting down to see his face. I couldn't look anymore. I was, I was well enough, I thought, oh, no, I just, just watched the clock. We knew he was going to get the record, it was just by how much. And do you know what? He, he wasn't far off where he expected to be with good conditions. These weren't great conditions for him, so absolutely incredible ride. Now with the corner that's been laid down to Alex Dowsett now, hasn't it? Could we see another Aubrey against Bournemouth-style rivalry? Uh, we shall wait and see. Well, the crowd is still here. We're waiting for Sir Bradley Wiggins to be crowned the new world record holder. Stand by for the presentation. Well, Sir Bradley Wiggins, the new R world record holder. How do you feel? Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh... <laughs> this could take a while. Thank you. I'm just, uh... I'm just glad it's done, you know, I said this. That's the closest I'll ever come to know, knowing what it's like to have a baby. Uh, it, was, it was just torturous, you know, you're constantly looking at the clock, counting down the minutes, and um, I'm, I'm just really relieved that it's done now, because it's been such a long build-up since Paris-Roubaix, and, you know, we've been through a lot as a little team, and my wife and children know more about air pressure now than, than anyone, and it's, um, like I say, I'm just glad it's over now. You, when you're out there, you never think it's going to come to an end, and, I guess, yeah, it's, it's done now, and it's, yeah, <laughs> so. And a fantastic time, not quite the 55.25 you've been hoping for, but you must be delighted with that. Uh, you, know, you know, I, I always compare myself to the greats, you know, and I, I'm just glad to be in, in the company of those guys, you know, Miguel's, Rominger, Chris, and uh, just, just to get up there and do that, you know, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Just, just to get up there and put yourself on the line, it, 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 it takes a lot of courage, you know, and it's, like I said, it's a mental game more than anything, more than physical, and it's tough, yeah. Yet another place in the history books for you, then. How does this rank in the list of achievements for Sir Bradley Wiggins? Well, it just tops it off, you know, just like I said earlier in the week. Had, had, if this was the only thing I did in my career, it perhaps would have gone a little bit unnoticed, but to do everything and then come here still, you know, as an old man and, <laughs> you know, I mean, like this, I said a few times this week, but the old home straight at Eastway used to be about here. And uh, I had such great memories racing around there as a kid. And um, I, just to come back and do this here, it's fantastic. I didn't get to race on this track at the Olympics. I sat up there somewhere. I can't remember much about it, but I sat there watching it. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, it's memorable. Yeah, it really is. The noise in here was just deafening how did you manage to block out this incredible crowd and concentrate uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's so so difficult you know? i mean it just after after two laps heiko was sort of doing that to me because you know you just adrenaline's going and put it this way they put a playlist together a music this week that i had to okay and i couldn't hear anything the whole ride so you know it was just that, I just thank everyone for putting the money, you know, buying a ticket and coming here and watching it, and it's um, fantastic. I mean, uh, I have to thank <coughs> my long-suffering standing sponsors in Sky, who uh, have supported me throughout all my successful years, so a big thank you to them. And, and also to Lee Valley Stadium, the staff have been fantastic this week to us, and uh, they've really accommodated us. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who's paying the heating bill this week, but the lecky bill's going to be enormous. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just, it's, and obviously I have to thank my team of people, Heiko, Andrew and everyone, and Pete Smith, Richard Freeman, um, and obviously my wife and children who've, like I said, just been the rocks in my life for the last 15 years, so. And we saw your wife and children congratulating you. They've been through this journey with you as well. How big a day is this for you? 
emotionally, personally, as well as professionally? Well, I think like it, more than any other ride I've done, it was a bit more emotional, really, because a lot, a lot of people, that are, my friends are staying in the same hotel as me, and they're all, they're all getting wasted yesterday, and they're all nursing hangovers this morning <laughs> at breakfast. And I went and I had to get my hair cut this morning and have me shave, and I went to the hairdressers, and the bloke said, what are you up to today? <laughs> and I, I just thought, not much, really. Just, <laughs> yeah. just making history. <laughs> So it's funny, you know, it's here. Mr. Bradley, congratulations. I will hand you over to Marion Stetton of the UCI for your victory presentation. I just say, it's, this is a, it was a real honor to, I mean, I have a lot of heroes in sport and that, but this guy in particular here, Miguel, was my childhood hero when I was a kid. <laughs> Special moment indeed. So Bradley Wiggins, congratulations. Well, there we go. So Bradley Wiggins gets a hug from five times Tour de France winner and living legend really, Miguel Indurain, who himself had the record back in 1994 with 53.040. But Bradley Wiggins resplendent on his chest, the distance 54.526 and he gets the official card through. So there we have it. Thanks very much for watching today on the UCI YouTube channel. I've appreciated your company. I've needed it. But it's all about this man. So Bradley Wiggins has set a new mark of 54.526 kilometers. I've been Matt Stevens. Thank you very much indeed.